What's going on guys, it's Joe filling in for WrestleMania. Vince Russo is a polarizing figure in wrestling, with some believing he helped save the WWF during the Monday Night War, only to kill WCW when he jumped to the WWF's number one rival. He also furthered his company-killing efforts with TNA, helping bring them to the brink of life support. Here are 10 of the worst Vince Russo storylines ever. Keep in mind that finding the worst Vince Russo storylines is like trying to pick out the Taylor Swift or Nickelback songs you hate the most. Where do you begin? Number 1. Bash at the Beach 2000 By 2000, Russo was burnt out and frustrated with WCW's sinking ratings and management breathing down his neck to fix things. According to Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, Russo was supposed to have Hogan walk out on the company, only to return a few months later. However, Russo apparently went into business for himself, cutting the following short promo on the Hulkster. From day one that I've been in WCW, I've done nothing, nothing but deal with the bullshit of the politics behind that curtain, and I really don't need this shit. But I came back for each and every one of the guys in that locker room that week in, week out, bust their ass for WCW. Let me tell you who doesn't give a shit about this company. That goddamn politician Hulk Hogan. All day long, I'm playing politics with Hulk Hogan because Hulk Hogan tonight wants to play his creative control card. To Hulk Hogan, that meant that tonight, in the middle of this ring, when he knew it was bullshit, he beats Jeff Jarrett. Well, guess what? Hogan got his wish. Hogan got his belt, and he went the hell home. And I promise everybody, or else I'll go in the goddamn grave, you will never see that piece of shit again. This resulted in Hogan walking out on the company and promptly filing a defamation of character suit against Russo, which was ultimately dismissed. Number 2. JR Oklahoma Angle Truly one of wrestling's most tasteless angles. Vince Russo sending co-writer Ed Ferrara to portray Jim Ross as Oklahoma was a bad idea. Not so much that it mocked JR but because it mocked his Bell's palsy, something Ross had shown tremendous courage in overcoming. Granted, the WWF has taken liberties mocking Ross and putting him in stupid storylines, recall the Dr. Heine skit, where Vince McMahon played a doctor removing items from a faux JR's behind. Nonetheless, this enraged fans and professionals alike, with Jim Cornette spitting in Ed Ferrara's face during a confrontation years after the Oklahoma incident. Vince Russo claims that all has been forgiven with JR, but we can't say the same for many of Ross's fans. Number 3. TNA Reverse Battle Royal Fight for Your Right was the name of Vince Russo's Reverse Battle Royal where 17 TNA stars battled outside of TNA's six-sided ring, fighting to make it into the ring. The first eight wrestlers who made it in then participated in a traditional battle royal, with the last two wrestlers going on to fight in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Add in a seating system that seems like it was made by someone who'd suffered multiple concussions. That would be Vince Russo for the unenlightened. The fight for your right didn't make any sense unless you were doing ecstasy, so naturally, TNA brought it back the next year. Number 4. Mike Awesome, The Fat Chick Thrilla, That 70s Guy Mike Awesome was such a talented wrestler with size, ring work, and aerial ability that made him a must-have in WCW, with the company going so far to sign him from ECW without bothering to check whether Awesome was under contract, but that's a story for another time. However, once Awesome got into WCW, Russo decided he needed an outrageous gimmick, as talent apparently wasn't enough. Awesome became the large lady Lothario known as the Fat Chick Thrilla, a wrestler who knew how to please the ladies, the larger the better. Although Russo deserves credit for anticipating the success of My 600 Pound Life, the fat chick thriller went nowhere, thus was born That 70s Guy, apparently an attempt to ride some of the momentum from the sitcom That 70s Show. Regrettably, the gimmick proved as popular as That 80s Show, leaving Awesome and WCW fans wondering how That Russo Guy was actually getting paid for these disasters. Number 5. David Flair and Stacy Keebler Marriage Nothing has the potential for a train wreck like an in-ring wedding, particularly when it's aboard the WCW train speeding to destruction. Stacy Keebler, who was working as Miss Hancock was also involved in a storyline romance with David Flair that, of course, led to nuptials. Flair got the shock of his life when Hancock revealed she was pregnant, but not by David. Wrestling rumor has it that Vince Russo was going to be revealed as the father. After all, if he could picture himself as WCW champion, he could certainly picture himself banging Stacey Keebler. Even Russo realized how ridiculous the idea was, so he went to plan B bringing David's father, Nature Boy Ric Flair, in as the dad-to-be. Fortunately, Russo was yanked, and so was the angle. Number 6. Russo Turns Goldberg Heel You've heard the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, apparently everyone but Vince Russo knows this. 
Bill Goldberg was the success story promoters dream about, a shining example of how to book someone to the top with a calculated and sustained push. Goldberg became a main event player in WCW and arguably its top babyface thanks to an unbeaten streak, a power-based offense, and undeniable charisma. Leave it to Vince Russo to take everything good about Goldberg and turn him heel just to shake things up. The fans didn't buy it and WCW was forced to turn Goldberg face. Storylines like this are the reason some fans think Vince McMahon secretly sent Russo to destroy WCW from within. Given the number of stupid storylines, this is one conspiracy theory that isn't hard to believe. Number 7. Vince Russo, WCW Champion Vince Russo's decision to make himself WCW Champion wasn't as much as a surprise as it was a confirmation that WCW was speeding down the express lane to financial ruin. Russo reportedly had said that the top heel should hold the belt, so why not the most hated man in WCW? Regrettably, Russo didn't know that he was the most hated man in WCW by wrestlers and fans alike because his storylines were destroying a once-beloved company. The 25th September 2000 edition of Nitro was one of the greatest nights in the history of our sport. At least, that's what Vince Russo thought when he put the WCW Championship on himself during a steel cage match between him and Booker T. The match saw Booker T destroy Russo and about to exit the cage when Bill Goldberg showed up. Goldberg told Booker to escape while he attended to Russo. Booker T did, but interference from Scott Steiner delayed him, leading to Goldberg inadvertently spearing Russo through the cage. The title win wouldn't be acknowledged until a few days later on Thunder. Russo's win devalued the WCW belt faster than what happened to dot-com stock that same year. Don't believe us? Russo vacated the title the next week on Nitro, the ninth time the title was vacated since Russo came aboard, and the seventh in 2000 alone. To put that into perspective, the WCW world title was vacated three times total prior to the Russo era. Number 8. David Arquette, WCW Champion Celebrity crossovers are a time-tested tradition dating back long before the WWE or WCW. However, they aren't a guaranteed success and, like most things in wrestling, require the right person in the right situation. When David Arquette filmed a wrestling comedy, Ready to Rumble, which featured a number of appearances by WCW wrestlers, an Arquette appearance on TV wasn't unusual. What was unusual was when Arquette won the WCW Championship. Arquette won the title in a tag team match on the 26th April 2000 edition of Thunder, where he allied with Diamond Dallas Page to take on Jeff Jarrett and Eric Bischoff the person making the pin becoming WCW Champion. Russo had Arquette pin Bischoff, becoming WCW Champion and holding the company's belt until its slamboree pay-per-view, where Arquette turned heel on Diamond Dallas Page, allowing Jeff Jarrett to win the WCW Championship. Number 9. Judy Bagwell on a pole match There's no denying Vince Russo likes gimmick matches, particularly when they involve sticking something on a pole, inanimate, or even animate. When Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman feuded over Tori Wilson, the angle devolved into a storyline of Shane Douglas having difficulties raising his personal flagpole. Therefore, Russo did the only logical thing possible and booked a Viagra on a pole match between Douglas and Kidman. That was nothing, however, compared to the infamous Judy Bagwell on a pole match, actually it was a forklift, which took place at 2000's New Blood Rising pay-per-view. Buff Bagwell was fighting for his mom's honor after Canyon began stalking her. Apparently, Buff wasn't the only one who had the stuff. The match stipulation held that Canyon would get Judy Bagwell's services as a valet should Canyon win. Buff Bagwell won the match despite a run-in by a heel David Arquette. Number 10. Recreating the Montreal Screwjob why anyone, including Bret Hart, would want to create one of wrestling's most hated moments is inconceivable, although, to be fair, the WWE has done it as well. At 1999's Starcade show, Bret Hart battled Bill Goldberg in a bout that started with a handshake of mutual respect. The match saw one referee after another taking a ref bump, leading to Rowdy Roddy Piper coming out in a referee's shirt. Hart applied his finisher the sharpshooter and Piper inexplicably called for the bell, despite it being clear that Goldberg hadn't submitted. This match sadly also featured Hart take the mule kick from Goldberg that led to the Hitman's retirement. This event that would go down in wrestling history as the worst Vince Russo idea until the following day when he had Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Bret Hart form NWO 2000. Well guys, there you have it, 10 of the worst Vince Russo storylines. We know there's plenty more, so don't be surprised to see another video. In the meantime, are there any that we didn't mention that you'd like to see? Be sure to leave your comments and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos.